All right, Bitwig Studio. So if, like me, you've been using Ableton Live for a few years and you want to get started, you'll find that setting up your audio is actually pretty similar, but there are a couple of important differences. For starters, the Preferences menu isn't up here anymore. It's over here on this other menu section right underneath the window header. And it's under Options. It's not on the far left again. So here's Preferences. Here's the Audio tab. And this all looks pretty similar. You've got your audio system, input and output devices, and you can set your sample rate, buffer, set up your inputs and outputs, and off you go. There are, the biggest difference is that if you plug something in, Live will automatically figure this out, but Bitwig doesn't. It doesn't constantly rescan like Live does. You have to do it manually using this button. So I've got this PreSonus FirePod plugged in. So I'll check it for input and output and you'll see the set of inputs down here changes to match. And then in Live, go into Preferences, Audio, your input and output looks like this. You get your mono pairs over here and your stereo pairs over here. So say one and two can show up as mono inputs and also as a pair, but three and four will show up as individual mono inputs but not in pairs. So if I go over here to this audio track, you can see 3 and 4 are missing because they weren't highlighted, but 3 and 4 individually are both there because they were. In Bitwig, it's a little bit more complicated. You can have these mono inputs with an individual input here. You can add another one, 1 and 2, but you can also add a stereo pair. And if you want, that pair can be the same inputs as, as something that's already set up as a mono. It'll just show up differently for you to choose from, just like live. But you can actually get pretty elaborate with this. You can have another mono input with the same physical input as another if you want to for whatever reason. And you've got this cool option here where you can actually alias them. So say you've got a synthesizer plugged in on three and four. Uh, you can actually call it synthesizer input, for example. And when you go to one of your audio tracks, you can show its input and output here. You'll see, whoops. Synthesizer input shows up here as one of its possible inputs. So this is really cool if you leave the same piece of gear plugged into the same place all the time. You can get a, you know, a normal name instead of numbers. The downside is that this is a global setting and this persists between projects. So if you constantly plug different things in, I recommend going and giving it a different name like stereo three slash four. That way you have numbers and you can tell very quickly what's going on. The output's pretty similar, but you've also got these roles. So say we add another stereo out, we could say, this output is meant to be for my headphone queuing. So Bitwig will recognize that, and certain places like the master out will pick up that something is meant to be speakers, or meant to be headphones, or meant to be like a generic output for, say, an effect send, or another hardware output for a custom monitor mix or something like that. And that's basically it. If you change the hardware, you'll probably have to stop and restart the audio engine using this button here. And that's just the same thing as flipping it off and on, just like you might do in live from the preferences menu, but now you get it in a big button. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Happy music making.